is that right and of course this was the phase which was called not rapid but slow rapid passive no it was slow oh okay okay slow passive it was slow passive ventricular filling, filling which is usually it is usually the longest phase and what is here now contraction. again the next cycle start that is atrial contraction. contraction and if it is contracting against a stiffened ventricle only then a sound may be produced S4. which is called s4 now another way to correlate these concepts is that you can say that this was what was this atrial what was this atrial systole and what was this continuing up to here atrial diastole and if we go like this from here what was this up to this phase this was ventricular systole this is ventricular systole and of course what is here what was this ventricular diastole the point which you have to remember s1 is at the beginning of ventricular systole and s2 is at the uh, you can say at the end of ventricular systole or beginning of the ventricular diastole and s3 is in the somewhere before the middle of the ventricular diastole and s4 if it is there in some pathological condition it is just before the next ventricular systole now if you really want to correlate all these things with the pressure changes the uh, volume changes volume within the ventricle you can see the volume in the ventricle here is slightly increased in this case volume remain the same you know during this phase volume will remain the same here volume will rapidly go down then it will further go down then volume will remain the same is that right then ventricular volume will start going up and again going up and eventually in the next stage so what we have to really learn that volume with atrial contraction volume in the ventricle increases during isovolumetric contraction volume in the ventricle remains same in rapid ejection phase volume in the ventricle become less in slow ejection phase it become further less. less and in rapid passive filling of course volume become more then slow passive filling again volume become more and in the end of course if next atrial contraction come volume is again added so these are the volume changes do you have any problem here another thing which i would like to highlight with this is that ecg electrical activity in the heart of course the p wave should be just before the a wave is that right if i make the ecg here right uh, where you want me to draw ecg should i draw it here or down on top on the top look if i draw the ecg you can understand that uh, atrial contraction if there's a atrial contraction mechanical wave of course there should be electrical stimulation of atria just before that so p wave of ecg should be before that and then this is onset of ventricular contraction it means there is a strong what what is this activity ventricular depolarization going on which has taken all the activity and of course during the what is this st phase st segment, segment you know plateau is there and you see it is still contracting but when relaxation start it means repolarization has started and that will lead to which wave t wave right so this is how ecg can be superimposed on that and of course here should be next p wave with next qr s i hope you can correlate these things is there any question little bit not clear no no correlate electrical activity with the it's very easy maybe could get to study some more no no let I, i will make it clear listen you see if i this 
is atrial contraction. Now, atrial depolarization should be before atrial contraction or after? Atrial depolarization should be before atrial contraction or after? First electrical event occur and then mechanical event occur. First atria is electrically stimulated, then it mechanically contracts. First ventricle is electrically stimulated, then ventricle undergo mechanical contraction. So, in the heart, first you have to remember the first is the electrical event and after that there is mechanical event. Now, if I say that atrial contraction is the atrial mechanical event, so electrical event should be just before that. So, electrical event for atria is represented by the P wave. So, P wave represents what? Atrial depolarization is just before the A wave. P wave on ECG is atrial depolarization and A wave on the pressure is pressure in the atria due to mechanical activity. So, A wave is representing mechanical activity and of course, before the atrial mechanical activity, there must be atrial electrical activity. Is that right? Now, the next point which you have to understand is that look here. Here the pressure, ventricle has started contraction. Pressure has gone very rapidly up. Do you think it is possible without depolarization of ventricles? So, depolarizing current is QRS. So, this QRS is showing that there is depolarization of ventricles and if ventricles are deep, being depolarized, of course, then mechanical event in the ventricle will start and pressure in the ventricle goes up, right? And there, ventricles start relaxing. Of course, just before relaxation, ventricular repolarization should be there. Are you with me? And if there ventricular repolarization there, then of course, which is the wave for the ventricular repolarization? T. T wave. Am I clear? Or any question? And of course, before the next cycle, right, before the next atrial contraction, again, P. P wave should come. And before the next ventricle contraction, just QRS complex should come. Is it correlated or not yet?